relationships repair and heal so that our children can take their places as world class leaders. This is a future in which the black community has truly created a culture of mental health and emotional wellness. And we have moved beyond trauma to well-being and from surviving to thriving and from thriving to flourishing. Now please, open your eyes. I want you to know that no matter what you see when you leave this room, when you go back into the hood, go into the neighborhood, that future that I just described is within our reach. It is within our reach. We can create it. But in order to get there, we have to clear away 400 years of emotional underbrush, 400 years of historical trauma, historical and continuing trauma. We've got to clear that away. And we've got to overcome and overturn the pernicious idea that black people are less than human. To create a real culture of mental health and emotional wellness, we have to struggle with what Dr. King called, for what Dr. King called psychological freedom. In his last speech to the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, he is asked the question, where do we go from here? And in a long exposition, he tells us a lot of things that we need to do to move forward. But he says that the first thing that we must do is to massively assert our dignity and worth and deal with this question of psychological freedom. And it is that theme of reaching down within our own souls and signing with the pen and ink of assertive manhood and womanhood our own emancipation proclamations. At the root of the mental health and physical health disparities and the academic achievement gap and the criminalization and the mass incarceration and the wanton killing of our children is the notion that we are less than human. At the root of so much that ails our community is that toxic idea. Overcoming and overturning that idea, that lie, is the key to building a culture of emotional wellness, and it is the key to transforming our community. The Association of Black Psychologists and Community Healing Network has set a very ambitious goal. We want to build a global movement to overcome and overturn the lie of black inferiority and heal from the emotional legacies of enslavement and racism. We want to heal because that is absolutely essential, but we also want to overturn because we don't want our grandchildren to have to deal with this when they come here. We don't want to have to deal with this indefinitely, so we want to overcome and overturn. We want to engage a critical mass of people in the United States in this movement by the year 2019. That's not too much time. But why do we, why do we have that deadline? If you look on the YouTube and you Google Rosa Parks, you will come across a many um, tapes per, but one in particular, it's about 60 seconds Long. And she's being interviewed by a white man, a very, very um, genteel southern white man, in uh, December of 1955, um, shortly after, well, actually at the end of her quest. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, it's at the beginning of her quest. And he says to her, Well, what do you black people, what do you Negro people want? And she says quite eloquently, We want our freedom, we want our dignity. And then he says, well, how long do you think it's going to take? And she says, I have absolutely no idea. When we saw that, we realized that when you have absolutely no idea, when you set no deadlines for yourself, when you set no targets, when you hold yourself unaccountable, this, this is what you get. This is why we have set that deadline. And this is why we're here today, because we know that we can do it. We just need to get ourselves together to do it. We have been working to build emotional emancipation circles in New Haven, in Tuskegee, in Baltimore. People here who are representing, uh, there are people here who are representing emotional emancipation circles that we've been working on in the United States. We're also working on them in the United Kingdom, 
to the good auspices of the Association of Black Psychologists in the United Kingdom in Cuba. Because okay. um, it's got to be a global movement. This infection is a global infection. It's got to be cured globally. We're working on it with our annual celebration of Community Healing Days as a way of putting time for healing on the black community's agenda. We've got a lot of things on our agenda. This, first and foremost, needs to be on our agenda. Because if we don't deal with this issue, we're going to be continuing to be debilitated in order to deal with the huge number of challenges we face that keep racking up. We've got to be emotionally healed and empowered to be able to do it. No question we'll be able to do it, but not until we heal. Not until we are empowered. We're doing it with our Defy the Lie and Embrace the Truth pledge campaign. Defy the lie of what? Black inferiority and embrace the truth of black humanity. This is the lady who said, you can't just defy something, you got to embrace something. And embracing our full humanity, because fu fundamentally, this is about reclaiming our humanity. We're doing it, again, in partnership with the Association of Black Psychologists, Creating, let me just say a little bit about what emotional emancipation circles are. They're a self-help, a support group. Basically an opportunity for us to come together, share our stories, and tell the, our truths. Be, become deeply familiar with the impact that this walking on hot coals, what has it done to us in terms of our self-image, in terms of our confidence, in terms of our relationships, between men and women and children and parents. There's an awful lot of healing and repairing to be done. The early evaluations, and we have our evaluator here, the early evaluations are really quite good, and she can give you some more of the details on that. But basically, people want more. They want opportunities 